I'm gonna mm. I'm gonna turn off. Yeah, you can mute yourself if you like. Uh, uh, you can. Um, Okay, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Um, I'm wearing a mask because uh, I got rainy nose. Uh, we got very cold weather. There's a, there was a, a hail storm two days ago and the snow on the mountain. And it's reportedly another storm coming this uh, evening and uh, with a flash warning. Um, mm. Last last time we, we got uh, electricity outage with the lightning. Um, it's very scary. Everything immediately shut down. Um, so I hope that this will happen. <laughs> what will not happen this, this time? Uh, due, it's at least during our class. But uh, uh, anyway, Oops. okay. Did you get the email uh, with the uh, assignment, pre-class yes. assignment? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Did you do your exercise, everybody? Yeah, those exercises were very good. They forced you to look at different aspects of the painting. Okay, I didn't great. think I'd get to 10, but I got to 10. <laughs> OK. <laughs> yeah, I did uh, more than 10. Uh, and I, I did uh, some. Uh, uh, ink painting practice, uh, like uh, this one I did uh, on hemp paper. I just did this one this morning before breakfast on uh, specialty paper we, uh, we just got in. I always uh, uh, interested in trying new paper. It's a semi-sized paper. You can see, uh, if you take a closer look, there's a golden frame, um, like a fan shape. And we also have a, a different color one. I, I tried with the Huang Bing Hong style. Uh, you can see that, right? So this is a, a semi-sized paper. You can, you can use the semi-sized paper this is, a, see, it doesn't really come through, but you can see a little bit the semi-sized. If it's completely uh, unsized, it's like this. See, this is a hemp paper. You can use any unsized paper, it will effect the same. So it has softer edge, soft, soft edge, right? And uh, uh, semi-sized paper gives you a harder edge if you need. Uh, you can soften it with water. Um, size, complete size paper would be um, another option, but uh, it's uh, less spontaneous. So I, I want to comment. Uh, more berry paper would be good. More berry paper, like a, a semi size paper, more berry paper here. Yeah. So you can cut the paper into a uh, quarter. Like this is uh, the uh, medium size, which is uh, 27 or 30 by 18. Uh, you can fold it in half and then half. So that's the size about uh, nine or eight and a half by 13 and a half or 14 by nine, something like that, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the, the right paper we're going to use. If you have time, to, you, you haven't done this, Make a plenty of them. We're going to we we're, we're going to make multiple attempts. Oh. <laughs> okay. Let me focus on my my own. Okay. So Henry, it's a uh, unsized, right? Um, semi-sized. Thank you. I think he used the kind of a mulberry paper, but we don't have that. It's a, a local <coughs> product during the, the 40s um, in Guilin, where he lived for two years, uh, from 38 to 40 or something like that. Uh, he was uh, invited by the local uh, 
leaders to um, promote their art during wartime. Uh, you know, they retreat to the uh, the east, southeast, and uh, he was uh, given a house just by this river. So um, he can he, he has a seal on this painting it says uh, Yang Shuo Tianming. Um, Tianming, like a natural residence of uh, Yang Shuo. Yang Shuo is the place where uh, a small uh, local name for, for this river, this scenic uh, river called the Li River. Have you ever been there, anybody? Li River in Guilin? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. 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 I have. I haven't been there, but uh, my uh, one of my students, Lisha from Australia, um, she she lived there for like a, a year, I think maybe a ten months, uh, in a in a school. Um, let me show some pictures. Yeah, just to inspire. I, I I know you you can search find for for many many pictures. Uh, but we we have a, this classmate. She's uh, from Australia, uh, so she lived there. I think in the about five years ago, something like that. Uh, oh. Okay, I have to close this one. I'm copying the instructions from here. Okay, do uh -huh. I need to unmute someone? You know? Okay, you can unmute yourself if you need it. So this is a, a classmate um, from Australia. She lived there and she sent us a, a blog during uh, the stay and she did uh, uh, plenty of uh, artwork. See, this is this is what we're going to do today. Um, uh, but this is a uh, rice field in the back, uh, in the foreground. But uh, you can see how light this mountain appears in the mist. This is a close up of some mountains with the moon shaped crescent, moon shaped cave there. I mean, uh, just a hole there, a sky hole there. And she's holding a kind of study. And this is the initial pictures that she's shared. You can see the reflections, how uh, mirror-like uh, come forward uh, reflection. And uh, the boat they use is made of uh, uh, bamboo or logs. I don't know. It's uh, just flat. Yeah. And people can sit on, on, on that with the chairs. I think probably they fix it somehow. Uh, let me see. You can see larger picture. See, that's tourist. Uh, tourist. Okay. So look at the, the how light and the contrast between the foreground and background. That's what we we're uh, going to um, play with. And she's doing panel study with uh, her teacher, probably. And you can see the background, scenic background. Yeah, this is almost like the mountain we're going to do. You see this little thing, I didn't, I wasn't sure what it is, but now I see there's some kind of island with some vegetation. We saw that in a section of our painting, as you can see some houses, they're not the necessary bridges, you know, just some kind of island connecting the two uh, banks sometimes. You know, when we talk about composition, this is a perfect example. Here we have a large block, a large, a medium, and a small. See, we always look for that. Uh, typically, we call that uh, steel yard composition. Um, you know, not not the symmetrical, but uh, balanced. Okay, and you can see this uh, this uh, fishing boat, <laughs> kind of, yeah, very simple. Yesterday I was uh, doing Venice, uh, the gondola 
boat, right? Gondola. And it's a very different kind of boat, but a similar thing. Um, yeah, she, she, she making tremendous progress while studying in China for two years. And she lived also in Shanghai, Nanjing, and Wuxi. Uh, I visited all those places uh, when we, we met there. Uh, it was a very uh, fruitful adventure for her. She now uh, back to Perth, Australia, to take care of her parents and uh, study art in, in uh, online school, I think. That's the latest news from Lisha. Uh, thank Lisha for sharing all this beautiful experience if you are uh, watching this recording. I think this is uh, uh, De Qing, the famous uh, waterfall, multi waterfall um, near Guilin, but uh, on the border with Vietnam, half in Vietnam, I think. And uh, this is a, a peak and she's uh, doing uh, right now. Okay, quickly. I hope you get inspiration from our own uh, people there, right? The, the, the picture is really one of us. Uh, so I feel I visited the place with her, although I haven't been there. I wish this is my dream uh, place to visit. So uh, Xi Hong was uh, lucky to have uh, uh, two year you know, resident artist in residence there. <laughs> By the way, this this is a, uh, a catalog, a, a exhibition, first time in Hong Kong uh, Art Museum. They published it in 1988 or 86, I think. Um, probably earlier than that. Anyway, I got from an uh, uh, antique store in uh, Pomona. Uh, when I was in jury duty uh, during lunchtime, I, I, I brought those antique shops, I found this. Um, <clears throat> this is a, a, a bio, biography with some nice pictures. I want to go through quickly. See, this is a picture of uh, him with the, uh, the famous uh, uh, Indian, I didn't wear my glasses, Indian poet. Tagore, Tagore, and uh, this is uh, he's doing the horse. You know he he's uh, the the person who did the, this. Remember that uh, you you see this this uh, logo right and and all the Maries, and uh, um, this is his painting. Okay, and uh, this this the title is by Liu Hai Su, another president. One of uh, the three or four most famous president of the uh, art school, uh, Liu Hai Su, Lin Feng Mian, we, stud we studied last week. And he, he is uh, one of them. Liu Hai Su is another in Shanghai. So three of them are most uh, um, influential, I think. Without uh, Chi Bei Hong, the Chinese painting would not look the, the same today. Uh, he introduced the Western um, style techniques while maintained the, the Chinese uh, media. You know, he was a, he was a uh, he was born into an artist family. His father uh, was a portrait painter. And uh, at young age, like 13, he started to, to uh, wonder with his father to paint portrait like this. He did this. Uh, the garment is, is, is like a uh, uh, pre-made. The face, I think you cannot really see, but he make a really good portrait at the early age. And uh, he, he painted this three or four, four gentlemen. Uh, you can see the background is uh, traditional, but has a uh, perspective. The composition is different, right, than the four wands, the dominant um, school in Qing Dynasty. He was born in 19, uh, uh, 1895 and died uh, 50, 53 at the age of 59. But he um, has, he's very 
he became famous, you know, before he went to France. So he did uh, this landscape, and he did the horses before he got he went to Europe. This these three horses. Uh, I think it's uh, he's influenced by the court painter um, in the Qing Dynasty. You know, the, from Italy. I forgot the name, Lang Shiming, Lang Shiming, uh, in Chinese. We, he studied uh, Western drawing uh, in France and uh, did uh, uh, figure painting uh, in oil mostly. Um, also, he did uh, kind of mystical uh, Chinese historical mystical uh, paintings uh, with a very uh, innovative style. Okay, let me just turn very quickly what he does with this uh, drawing. You can see how realistic he could do, and then he's drawing from a zoom. His his wife taking a nap. He's a um, self-portrait. He did many self-portraits with different uh, uh, styles during his uh, uh, art development. And this uh, horse um, was done in Western drawing style, but right? he did uh, later in Chinese brush. That's the most famous uh, subject matter he did. But he, he's also good at birds, like a magpies, um, my teacher, by the way, Zhang Zhenying, was a, a student of him. He was the dean of the Central National Central University in Nanjing, my hometown. And uh, it was in Chongqing, I think, my, when uh, the war during the World War II. And uh, uh, my teacher studied uh, in the department. Uh, so he, he was one of the, he, he was the head of the department. Another teacher of my uh, teacher, Zhang Suqi, he also um, died young in, in his late 50s, I think, in, in, in the San Francisco, actually, Zhang Suqi. So um, he, he, well, I can call him my grand teacher, right? Yeah. Okay, just. Uh, and some oil paintings, you can see figures, just portraits, and the scenery, okay, Huangshan, Huangshan, um, the Yellow Mountain, um, and uh, Himalayan, the in Indian. He visited India in 1940, and lived there for maybe half a year or longer. He did many masterpieces there, and uh, he, he took a, um, models, uh, you know, to, to create a legendary painting called Yu Gong Yisan, the four, the four uh, old men moving a mountain in front of uh, their, their home, um, a legendary painting, I think. Okay, this is a detail of the painting we're going to do. I think this painting called the, the rain, uh, in rain, after rain, spring rain uh, on the river is his best landscape. He, he, did, he didn't do many, maybe 10 of them, you know, are good. Um, this is the, the only one um, that I would, I would think it's the uh, very difficult one. Okay, but he, he used the ink almost like a watercolor and you don't really uh, see this kind of, uh, uh, let me change the, here. You don't really see the reflections in the in the uh, classical landscape, right? Did you see any reflections in Shetao? Maybe Shetao could do a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and, and Shetao does do the sky, I know. But he's he in the article he wrote that the, the compared to European scenic uh, landscape painting, um, the Chinese painting does not do sky and not, not reflections or lighting. In fact, so uh, he wants to reform Chinese painting um, <clears throat> by introducing this kind of a concept techniques uh, from uh, the West. And he thinks it's scientific and uh, universal. Uh, so he doesn't, uh, he didn't 
uh, copy any traditional uh, style formulas in the past, you know, from the past. He, he paints directly from nature uh, and from uh, his uh, interpretation of nature, I think, um, by fusion of uh, West and East uh, concept and techniques. Uh, very common in his uh, era, you know, people holding uh, oil brush on the one hand and a Chinese brush on the other. Other, we're still doing this today, um, and he tried to kind of um, uh, fuse, you know, fuse, uh, to combine them. But uh, it's kind of hard, I think. So better just um, learn the concept, not totally, um, you know, replace the one one to the other. So. Uh, I think the the Western approach to learn Eastern art, like uh, Matisse or <clears throat> Van Gogh, they just learn the concept and ideas, got inspirations. Not the like a Shibi Hong. He, you know, he would just use oil to paint, <coughs> adapt to the whole thing. And he's a uh, um, birds. Horses. Okay. Um, let's let's do the painting now. Any questions, comments? Uh, I know you have tried this. I um, I'll show you again, so you can do another one with me. Um, so let's cut the paper. I'm going to use the uh, mulberry paper first. Maybe that's the most uh, popular paper you have. Then we'll use the semi size or other paper to, to see. And the smooth size is uh, the, the site we paint on. I think I'm fairly better now. I'll take my mask off. Getting warm. Okay. Um, let me use a little. Let's see if this will work. Sometimes I I I, I try to create a little angle. Mm. Necessary, but that's that's okay. So you can use pencil, but I I'll just fold it. I'll just fold the paper, and uh, I'll give it um, some uh, guidelines. A uh, grid, okay. First of all, I I fold the paper in half. This is the center line, which we want to avoid. We <laughs> at least we don't want to put uh, the mountain. Um, but actually, he has the cent uh, center of the mountain there. I'll show you how he deal with that. And uh, then I fold the thirds, OK? You learned how to do the thirds. I, I just estimate. You don't have to be precise. You know? Yeah, just estimate the golden rule. It don't have to be perfect, just estimate. Okay, the third. And I would use my uh, my uh, uh, drawing as reference because uh, uh, I also have the marks on my drawing. I have, the, this is a, you know, I did all uh, the, whole, the whole paper, that's, um, the exercise I sent you, I just did on one sheet. So it just give you how large you need. It's, it, it don't have to be large. It, it, it could be like a, a business card size, okay? And it could be a half page like this, so I can uh, share with you, okay? 
Um, let me use a, uh, for, for this uh, first one, I, I'll use a large brush. So we go from uh, uh, large relationship without uh, doing too much detail. When you get into detail, like houses, things like that, you, you got lost in the big picture. So I'll, I'll do the, the main picture first. Um, that's in the, Okay, I'll just use, this is number three, by the way. Number three of the, the wrist brush, my, my plein air uh, painting brush. Okay, I use, uh, um, I think the best is to use fresh ink, but I only got um, over light ink here. You can, you can add a little bit, a little bit uh, indigo. I think he got indigo in the ink for the, uh, just a little, a little tone, I would say. Actually the, the, the background mountain for uh, what they call the, the, the uh, area of perspective, right? So we, I will dilute the ink with a little bit. Let me see, I got some more indigo. Oh, here. I was looking at the, Picture of uh, Shibe Hong's horse. <laughs> this is the Marie's. Uh, you can use, uh, uh, maybe he will use the uh, Thalo Blue, because Thalo Blue is a little more uh, um, purple, kind of, right? I don't know how to describe It's stronger. I think he used Thalo then. Indigo uh, because it's stronger. It's a, it's a harder uh, color to to control. It's very staining, very strong. So everything turns blue. Is it just I think it, I got too much. Let me just take it out. Well, you can use pants gray. In watercolor, maybe for this uh, mono, monochrome painting. Okay, and uh, you can use uh, a testing paper to to test. Uh, let me just use uh, another sheet. And you can practice a little bit the the strokes, you know. Um, Let's say how to do the how to do the uh, this kind of mountain. So you see how I I um, hide the tip to so make it like a squirrel, not a square, not round, um, and uh, he is a calligrapher uh, in in the seal script style. So in sales script, you, you you don't you do not have the hook or the kick and that kind of thing. Everything is rounded, you know, like a, it, it, the tip is always in the center of the, the stroke, and you can. So he hold the brush straight, I think, just a little, just kind of rough, goes like circles, long circle. You know, it, it could it could repeat, but not to have this kind of stroke. Okay, this looks pretty close. I think so. All right. So the the first mountain I'm thinking is the um, the peak. Um, but uh, I consider this is a um, like a or we call the brush holder, brush holder, uh, you know, brush holder, right? Like this, this is brush holder mountains. Um, so you, you do it in a group of uh, several peaks. Um, so I, I may call this a, a host mountain uh, group. Let me show you closer. And uh, think about, the uh, um, 
the chart, what do you call the electric uh, cardiograph is along a, uh, a line, which is the, um, in this case, I think the skyline is about uh, uh, above the, the quarter, you know, um, and not the, uh, about quarter, let me see, between quarter and the third, so something around the third. So the first mountain is uh, on the right side, but a little bit maybe uh, to the left. So it's right there. I think I'll do this right there. I think a little bit darker. So just like that. You don't have to fill in all the white. You leave some white and you can fill in with water. I just you know, stroke, and then uh, uh, quickly capture the the, the essence, uh, the bloom of the of the mountain. So lo a large soft brush, lo large soft uh, mixture brush like this is really handy to do. And just exhaust exhaust the the ink, you know. You can use dry brushing to create a, um, some soft edges, you know, as preparation for the, the clouds. The clouds is in between this um, vertically, the, starting from this uh, this corner, in the in the center section, from this corner going up, uh, going you know, you can you can draw with light ink, and uh, let me just add some water. It's, there's no certain rule where you start. It's really uh, depends on how you feel and the, you know the convenience. You don't have to uh, do it specifically and then you know, try to make color exactly uh, for that spot. You you just go with the um, what's available on the on the brush. You know, you just do it. Uh, uh, in a maybe in a in a sequential order. Uh, from Henry, the, uh, yes. Would you ever use the invisible ink? No, I tried. If I failed, <laughs> I don't like the hard hard edge of, for the class. Believe me, I it won't work unless you use uh, uh, diluted. I didn't really experiment. Uh, I I I I used the invisible ink. And then I, I dried it, it created a hard edge. You know what I mean? You can try yeah. that with the diluted um, solution um, uh, uh, intensity. Maybe, you know, it will work. I, I thought about that. It would be a nice, thank you for, for that question. It's a good question. I did experiment, but uh, uh, um, just avoided the hard, hard edge. Yeah. Okay. So it, when you repeat, you can, you, with the same, um, same tone on the, on the rice paper, because it absorbs more, it creates uh, darker. You don't have to darken the, you know, when you try to enhance like here, if you just repeat with the same ink, it will darken it because it, it takes, so at the beginning, you might, you might do something dry, on the dry side, um, and this also, the dry brush also create uh, some kind of uh, a soft edge. So it's not like a uh, cut and paste, you know what I mean. Um, hope, I try not to paint the mountain too large. That's the point. That's why we had the grid, okay. So now we're, we're working on this uh, section from, uh, you know, the, the third uh, section still around the, the line, the center line, the steel yard. You know the, the steel, the old, um, old uh, measure, like a weighting tool, we call this stick, uh, stick steel yard, right? You hold it um, on one um, string, which is on top, you know? And then um, you put the weight on one side, and then there's a little uh, metal, uh, heavy metal 
stuck to, to balance that. That's, so it's not uh, uh, equal, but uh, has some balance, right? So just keep working and then add water. I think that's, so you, you start with relatively dry and then uh, immediately he will, he will just like a Huang Minghong does, you know, just add water to the, to the front of the, the brush. See, if I want to add a distant mountain, I added water to the tip and I just uh, paint in a, in a side brush kind of, so that creates a very, very, very soft, you, know, you don't even see that. I can see, you know, just little uh, ink. I still have ink here because I, I touched the water. I, let me hide myself and then let you see my water. Okay, so I, I just touch a little water and I just did this, okay. And then I can do something here, uh, just for the same effect. Like, like uh, here I have a mountain, very distant, you know, in the background, that's very soft. So I just do that first with a very soft brush like that. So it should be a little peak. Very small because it's farther and it's smaller. And you can continue with uh, this tone right here. And there's a little one. Okay, you don't have to follow exactly each little um, little peak. Okay, here's another area that's uh, where the the clouds start. Actually, I'm doing the cloud, not really concerned with uh, the mountain. Here, I, at the same time, I mean, yeah, you, you kind of um, use this, to squeeze out the white, right? And now I, I continue with the, uh, this is about uh, another um, vertical line. We, we are right on this, okay. And uh, just do another mountain in front of the light when we did. It might create some blur. That's what he does here. Yeah? See the blur, the soft edge, lines, wet into wet. And just let it be. <clears throat> okay, and then uh, another important line is the horizontal horizon, which is um, on the third. Um, let me see. Yeah, it's a it's a little bit above the. Um, there's a two horizontal line. The main the, in the front is a little below, maybe right on the, the third, the lower third. And this is uh, about the middle. The, the horizon actually is pretty much at the middle. So I can draw, just draw the, the line and then just um, pinch the foot of the mountain right to that line there. And you can always, um, do some some dry uh, light ink, not to wet the whole thing because it's uh, if it's soaked, you cannot add it will blur. So you you just you know with a dry brush just to prepare something, and then you draw this uh, this uh, mountain here. You have another kind of mount kind of around it, right? And then this this between. A, a camel, camel mountain. <laughs> we always use animal uh, to name the mountain. We just name this camel mountain. And this one also could be a camel. Um, the, the last one that stops the, the uh, uh, eye is a little darker. Okay. And just some blur, you know, into the the wet. I, I prepared. There might be a little bit of white there here. Uh, that's okay. Don't have to eliminate all the white. Remember, just keep it loose. Okay. Uh, I have some kind of uh, island, like a, a little distant bank on the horizon. Lots in the font, 
lost and found. Yeah. And here I have a, a foot, like for this mountain. I, I, my interpretation is this goes all the way down here. Um, let me just do all the mountain before I do any, you know, buildings and stuff. So um, we we set we set the stage for the village, the residence. Um, the, the, okay. The, oh, reflections very important. Really, you have to match. Uh, if there's a peak on top, there's there's a reflection on the bottom, right? So. Um, let me finish this. Uh, this line goes up and down, and this has a little bit lead, uh, a little a diagonal angle. I think maybe uh, that just like a perspective line, you know. Okay, here we have the lot of trees, uh, the largest group, maybe a darkest part in this painting is here. The, the dark part uh, in watercolor, you add the last, right? So um, we'll add that with pure ink. So now we just uh, do the shape, the silhouette, the silhouette, okay? And notice the large, small, and the uh, medium, large, medium, and small on, in any kind of grouping. So there's a medium and large, so they're not the same height, same mass, okay? So you overlap them somehow. We can have some uh, vertical line for the, uh, just like a trunk, things like that. Uh, so there's a reflection. I think the reflection usually uh, could be either darker or lighter than the, uh, the things uh, reflected. Uh, usually, it's the opposite. If it's, a, uh, it's darker, the, the reflection is lighter. It is a, uh, something like that. Um, let me start doing some. Uh, so sometimes we cannot wait uh, to soften the edge. So I start wash the, the clouds a little bit. Just just soften a little edge. You know, not. Uh, Awesome. Okay, uh, we have a lot of detail here, but basically he does not really outline those. You know, maybe I, the only outline I see here is the the triangular side wall of a, a building, maybe just like that. That's about it. It's it's very soft. It's just, he didn't really use pencil, I think. So some roof he just did with the a flat brush kind of stroke. Yeah, that's uh, that's about it. And, uh, there's a house on this, maybe in the shady part. So that's uh, some triangle, some rectangular combined, uh, suggesting suggesting the, the building. Okay, the, the, the window of the building is just a little tiny dots, you know, maybe that's a, a door, just something like that. Uh, and then, this area is another uh, key point with, where you create some depths by overlapping. Um, um, let me see. Yeah, to create some separation between the um, distant river and the the, uh, the front. Okay, so there's. Um, I interpreted this part as a, either bridge or deck, uh, you know, like like a harbor of uh, boats. Doesn't matter. But the key is, you know, make it uh, loose and suggestive, not to uh, complete, no completion. So my second uh, suggestion is no completion. Um, you can use a smaller brush. Let me just use this bigger one because I'm, I think uh, we just concentrate on the on the. Uh, Feeling at this point. So this uh, side starting roughly on the third, first third, and uh, um, right on the third, it goes basically up and down along that line. So let's go this way, just to stroke. I see some kind of hole there. 
and then you you kind of go uh, be something behind that squeeze out the the upper because the the horizontal the horizon is here, um, and you should see a little bit a tiny a you know a, a line of uh, the upper upper uh, that uh, upper side of the deck or a boat or whatever, however uh, the 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 uh, uh, pier, what do you, whatever you call them. Okay. And just squeeze out. I can have some overlapping, some kind of, that's it. So you can, you can have some uh, park the boats, but he does just uh, with uh, some kind of reflecting shadows, very Western, uh, very Western, because you only do the shadows, not the, uh, or reflections, the dark, just suggest the, but they don't really, um, you know, it's elusive, but so the main body should be uh, still in your mind. You know, you just have to go, the reflection is a reflection of the, the main uh, thing, right? Okay, here is another uh, common uh, pitfall because I made many paintings, I, I, I make the same mistake. This part should be very um, uh, far, you know, so not make this this uh, group too too close, and uh, not to combine this whole thing in, into a one uh, block. So you need to create some kind of uh, um, break in between. So there's a rhythm of. Uh, some, you know, some paths. So you don't paint the whole forest along the side. That would be no rhythm. So that would destroy the rhythm. Okay, so wet into wet with some dark. Let's see. And you can practice a little bit. Just, just kind of uh, lose the, the edge. Uh, just that with the direction, sometimes it goes up or, or you know, to at the end. So it, it shows kind of the, like a football shoe does, you know, it has a coherent uh, direction, not just a, you know, lazy dots. It, it, it grows on the tree, so it has a, a radiation or something uh, indicates uh, the uh, the root, uh, you know, the yeah. you don't pinch the trunk, but you keep the trunk in mind. They will you will help to do indicate, you know, their um, their leaves of uh, trees, not uh, just uh, grass uh, or something else. Okay, then there some kind of uh, vegetation in the front along the bank. Okay, and you can start to do reflections. So dark, horizontal lines represent the, the ground, the bank. Okay, and then that it does it very quickly, so it's wet into wet. Um, okay, let me finish this part. There's two, there are two trees, basically. One on the left is taller, the other one is a cliff kind of uh, uh, shorter, but Bigger. So it vary the shape, the sort of way. Mm -hmm. And there's some point, I just paint this tree into that area. So it, it really depends on the situation. Uh, you can you can prepare, you can do the, the little bit the the um, um, let me go back to this light. I, I just changed the brush to the wash out the dark. Uh, let me do this. Uh, Reflection. Let's 
the reflection of that pop. And then here you, you don't have to copy exactly, but just paint very loosely. And uh, this one will have a bolt. So maybe the bolt should come first. That's why I'm hesitating to do. Uh, if you do that, make, make sure you save room for the fishman. I think I better leave it. Okay, then we can put the because I wet the, the paper a little bit here, so that's uh, uh, wet into wet to get the soft, soft um, effect. Like uh, this tall tree, concentrate on the solar wave. Always, not worry about uh, details. With a large brush here in the dry large brush, just uh, wet into wet, and then this uh, reflection goes like that. Just some dots, and here's a tree that goes outside. It, it's like the the one of those uh, islands, you know, that that vegetation on a little island could be a willow tree or something, and uh, just a few dots. You can. You can use the uh, water or light ink to blur it if you need it. All right. Refraction. See, I have a, um, another uh, grouping. You might call it large, medium, or large, medium, and a small, small in between. Okay. So they're not the same size, right? So you can make a overlapping. It's good. Don't be afraid to to break that horizontal line. You know, you need to overlap that creates uh, depths. Okay, and uh, see so some kind of. Uh, I don't like it. I'm not sure if it's a name. Doesn't matter. Some ambiguity is good. And uh, uh, you can just use the tip of this brush, or you can use a smaller brush to just add a little, uh, a little mask, or I don't know exactly, poles, or um, yeah, something like that. Okay. okay, I need to finish by doing uh, the uh, reflections on the on this ground before this gets dry. The timing is very crucial here. So we you can wet the, the paper a little bit in clean water, and then just uh, or you can add water uh, after the dry brush. See this just zigzag and then uh, add water, another zigzag. And uh, here we have some small refraction of that. It's very light. Um, we keep this area the most contrast, the lightest light uh, and darkest small detail here. Okay, just a, just a, very light, this area. This is kind of upside down V, the sky, and then this also. Um, if it's enough, if not enough, you can add a very light mountain there, just to fill in. But we don't have to do the reflection. And uh, uh, if it's not enough, you can use, you can use water and then, uh, is if you like the shape, you can use dry brush, just the kind of um, gliding on top very softly, very dry, dry brush to confirm it. Very gently and wet into wet. Okay, here we have uh, we have the dark reflections. That's 
soft on the edge. And there's some dry brush in the direction which you balance uh, the, the moisture. You know, not everything is uh, totally wet or too dry. So you just pretend something between. Um, okay, and uh, there's, there's a little bit jumping, jumper, we call it. So let's see, we can just add a roof. And uh, a little bit tree or something. I think there are bamboo around the house. And just naturally, if they're kind of bamboo, I think that's the kind of gesture of the bamboo in the background. Anyway, you don't have to identify the trees. <clears throat> in this painting, he's, he's um, basically doing uh, a, a xie yi or you know, uh, spontaneous painting, not, not really realistic. That's why it, it will please the both you know, Western and uh, Eastern eyes when you're doing idea writing, but not too um, rigid, rigid you know, in, in either classical uh, realism or, uh, or classical literati. Literati is kind of a, um, too far, you know, from a, the elusive reality. But uh, the photographic realism is not not very beautiful either. And so we need to balance between that. Between uh, I'm I'm looking at uh, the uh, little picture on my screen, and I see this area. It's uh, too white. I want to leave the that for the um, for this focal point. The dark, dark, dark. Yeah. Okay. So I I would. Just gradually be very careful at this point. When you start using your rational mind, it's just very easy to go too far. Okay, just to keep. Oops. Dark. That's the shady part. I try to copy. When I try to copy, I don't know what I don't think. I just kind of follow his. Um, try to see the whole picture, you know, don't, don't overdo things. So, a little bit white, not too much. So now I try to eliminate, I want it white. Oh, <laughs> the boat. Uh, you can use a small brush, the uh, detail brush. Small brush. Okay. Um, should I enlarge it? I think you can enlarge the original painting. Uh, I just keep doing on this. Uh, where am I? Sorry. <laughs> so he, he does it too with the. Uh, um, Western style, you know, the shading kind of thing. You don't have to, I, I just learned this boat uh, yesterday, the, the Italian gondola, 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 gondola. So maybe we do something like this, it's fun. <laughs> do you think so? Uh, this is a pretty authentic uh, flat. Oh, it has a raised um, front. Let me just copy this because I really want to fake it. <laughs> I'm a forger. <laughs> you can call me. I will be proud if I could forge Master Shi's painting. You, you can find many forgeries these days. It's hard to, uh, to tell which one is forged. And I, I because I have this book, you know, so I identify them. Otherwise, I, I was fooled. 
kind of sport. I, I'll show you some big. They're pretty good. Yeah. This is almost outside the picture, but it's a diagonal pointing to the bridge. It's a, uh, light against dark. dark in, uh, it's right below this uh, peak, the reflection here. So I want to do. Uh, this is pretty horizontal, I think. This this part, this is this tail is horizontal, and then the diagonal. You, you can do it in sections and then raised. Uh, it, I'm sorry, this should be a little longer. Oh, I made the mistake. My drawing skill, you can tell, is not that good. That's why he thinks drawing is the foundation of all fine arts. That's his uh, opinion. So you have to really practice drawing. Something like that. Okay. And then I just use. Okay, this is a little too dark. I realized that the dark should be the figure, not the boat. Okay, so what you do is so you can blot, blot it with the, and you just add some water for the reflection first. So a little bit water under it, and I blot it. That's it. I, I tried to fix it. Don't repeat my mistake. Please. Okay, now I use lighter ink for the reflection of the boat. You, you can see that angle goes opposite. If this uh, if the, this angle goes up, the reflection goes down. And uh, I, I'll do the figure reflection right now. It is the, it is the same. And now I, I work on the figure. I, I don't have a the skill to do all the details because he his painting is on a four sheet of uh, rice paper 27 by 54. can you believe it you must use a large brush for this kind of uh, spontaneous style and there's a, a, a hat in his head White, okay, just the triangular shape. So I just basically uh, dot some some uh, something for them, and uh, this pole pointing to the direction where you want the reader to see. So that just goes up like that. It's a different uh, kind of uh, uh, toward I mean more than the gondola because in Italian they use kind of. Uh, Short one. This is a, a long bamboo uh, pole. You you kind of go um, because the river probably is shallow, so you can touch the ground and then uh, push. So the the person is standing in front instead of uh, the back of the, the boat. Anyway, so that's my copy. I think. Um, the, the clouds doesn't look like a cloud. Realize that. Let, me, let me make it just a little bit. This is too square, it's angular, right? I want to make it longer. Wow, the, he, he does this cloud so elegantly, almost like a belt, dancing belt, you know. Just You can put accent if you need it. You should have your own rhythm. Everybody, you cannot really copy someone's uh, 
spontaneous. Even himself cannot duplicate this. Um, that's why this was uh, dedicated to the collection of uh, his uh, uh, wife. The inscription says, um, collected by Jingwen, beloved uh, wife, Jingwen. <laughs> He, she, she was uh, the director of the, the museum, uh, the resident museum in Beijing, and she passed away two years ago, I think. And, uh, you know, I try not to talk about his life, his uh, uh, other, other paintings in this class, but you can read that. Uh, there are movies, there are documentaries. Uh, everywhere online, I think. If you read Chinese, uh, there are also English publications, I believe. So he's a very influential figure in Chinese, contemporary Chinese art. Thing. He spent eight years in France and the, uh, Germany, uh, toward, uh, Europe. Now it's uh, the, the uh, edge. When you're in the end of a watercolor, you do the same thing. Huh? So I worried about uh, the edges. You know, you're at the finishing stage when you're doing this. And uh, eliminate some uh, unwanted white by using light, light wash, uh, you know, just uh, concentrate, let the viewer uh, see the clouds and some, you know, like a house. A little bit of white here, there, indicate uh, the, the uh, suggest the, the, the additional layers of okay. And that's the uh, one. Uh, we have one one. One hour almost. Do another one. Okay, we can. How is yours going? We can do something else if you want. Um, like his horses, nobody wants to. <laughs> or his uh, birds. I'm kidding. His horses would be great. Okay, so, sure. Um, so enough for this, you think? Enough? Okay, I, I will show you some other samples uh, with the, the picture, the, the one I did on um, earlier. Uh, this is too dark. What I do is I use clean water, just uh, kind of to break it with the uh, water. Sometimes uh, it, would, it, would, it would take a while. But uh, you will see a water. You will see the effect. I just put the water there. Sometimes I, I blot, but you don't have to just let the water do the work uh, for you. Okay. And uh, sometimes you can you can you can repeat this by blotting some ink away and add water. You can. You can uh, you can recover the light a little bit. Don't use white. You know, this is water, transparent watercolor. Okay. So the light is created by uh, water. Yeah. 
I, I see the difference. Oh, actually, it's quite different. I don't know why I don't see that in the angle. Can, can you see the, the light there, right? Okay. And uh, sometimes we can just add some vertical. Like Oops, don't overdo it. All right. Yeah, I think sometimes just leave uh, a little white. He has some trace brushes. Don't, uh, no need to make it uh, like a flat. You know. How do I avoid that? Yeah, when I try to fix things rationally, I always create some uh, trouble myself. Yeah. Let it dry, maybe uh, then you uh, paint on the wall, see from distance, then decide what to do. Okay. I'll use another kind of picture, maybe this time to explore the uh, other possibilities. This is semi size short, so we can. Like that. I'll do the small size. Okay, horse might may need larger size. There's a uh, two horses under the cypress tree. Is that you could still landscape? You know, then you can do a larger one. Okay. Let me show you. Um, this is brass. So if uh, Okay, if you look at the, my left corner, you'll see the paintings I'm looking through and let me know if you like it. Uh, this is a moon, moon uh, lit landscape. You can see how um, soft the edges, wet into wet, right? Like we did, so he did the sky, then the, the, the pine tree in front of that. Okay, this is a horse with a cypress. Uh, we can just do, this lower part is a nice horse. Do you like it? We don't have to do the whole thing top, just too long. This is a nice horse I like. This is oil of the, the place we just did. And uh, his landscape. Yeah, this is a bad picture. <laughs> oh, this is India uh, side of the Himalayan mountain. Uh, horse, horses with a uh, cypress tree. That's what you see. And this is quite small. But, you know, we, we can always do just this much, uh, like, uh, yeah, just the uh, carpentry of boundaries. That's a nice one. Pardon me? That's a nice one. This one? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> You can just do one, not the back one, right? Uh, do you like the back one? It's kind of hard, perspective. Let's try. Let's try. Henry, is that in our handout? Uh, oh, no, this is not in your handout. Can you send it so we can see the larger okay, picture? Let me share. Um, Oh, I can send you email. I have to go to my email program. Okay, let me put it on the uh, larger screen so you can start doing your sketch. Should I just, uh, okay, let me, should I send you later? We just do the sketch together with this um, on the screen. Maybe share screen. That's fine. Share yeah, screen, yeah. It's okay. fine. I print the screen already, so it's okay. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we'll share the screen. And then you can also see my drawing. If you want to uh, shift back to speaker view, I think uh, you can determine if you want to see the shared screen or uh, my drawing. Okay. Good. 
try to learn. Yeah, I got it, Henry. I okay. printed the screen. Okay, good. Um, I would do, I think the, the course must come first because the uh, this dark course is in front of the the second tree. I think there's overlapping of the good. So uh, can you show us the, where you're sketching? Oh, you can switch this view. To, oh, okay. You can switch to my um, host view. Uh, I think there's a button on your, you can switch the view to, um, let me just do this. Okay, this is better. <laughs> I cannot see you, Henry. Oh, I see. Um, I have to stop sharing. I can see you now. Okay, <laughs> okay now. Yeah. That's fine. That's, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, good. Just the small picture. You don't need the large picture. Anyway, so just to see my small picture. Uh, if you want to see my face or you want to see the, you, you want to see the, the, the dishwasher. We have a, two, a three section dishwasher available on our website now. Um, if you want to have this kind of uh, convenient. Uh, so I, I wash the brush in one cell and then I uh, wash again and then I dip clean water. Uh, or I can use one for color, one for ink. You can divide it for different usage. That's very convenient. Okay. Henry, so, what paper? Sorry. Oh, I use the semi size short without the mark. Yeah, the smooth side. Uh, we could do a sketch, but I just go directly. Uh, because I've done hundreds of his courses in the past. But still, you need to determine the perspective, right? Uh, I think the two should be the same, but it looked like one smaller to the other physically, not the perspective, so that's okay. So the dark one is actually smaller. Uh, so this one is almost on the focal point, uh, a little lower uh, than this, this. So when you paint a horse, uh, it's the same thing like a, you do with a, any animal or like a crane, or you just do a square, you know, a jar a rectangular and just uh, divide it into, um, I think it's three thirds, and then the, the hip is a one third. So you should have a simplified form in your mind, if not you know, on the paper. So I just do this uh, hip, like for example, uh, and uh, the tail goes about half, right? Half of the, so I just use this uh, combination brush, kind of soft and stiff brush combined. And uh, so this should be not too far. This tail is not, <laughs> not, not, uh, not very strong wind, but it is strong, but you don't want to go too far. I already did like a too horizontal. It should be slant, more slant yeah, than this. And, you know, you can make it uh, more poetic. That's okay. Yeah, I, I used to do this. Okay, this angle is very... Okay, so this, the dark side, I decide left side is more shady. Okay. And, uh, the, uh, the top is uh, lit, right? So we just do it uh, with a uh, profile, not to worry about the control too much. And you can draw the contour and the feeling. You know, that's what uh, I, I was doing. And then this uh, upper thigh, the leg thigh, uh, I just draw from, from the joint up. Uh, and then uh, a lot of leg is so like there. And uh, use, use a darker ink for the lower bone, very bony. So another third, he, he made the, Horse looks very tall. Very tall. And the, the hoof is in the, the grass. But yeah, you can see it. I think. We will draw that later with a, a small brush. And uh, pay attention to the bending direction. 
So it's bent forward, right? And this one has the weight, uh, so it's more straight. Yeah, straight. The leg, the the head is on the on this side, and there's um, another overlapping um, from a perspective, almost like an eye level. It's not much higher than the first one, and this. A suggestion overlapping, something like that. Okay, and then uh, I'll just suggest that oh, it's from the back, so you really don't really see. You see the split on the back, I think. And uh, here's the bone on the on the corner, upper right, upper left corner. Right. The, uh, bone. And uh, there's bone, the belly. I suggested the belly. Uh, you don't really see that, and a little bit. I don't know what's that. Um, don't worry about. So the the head is hidden. Um, so you can you see my horse? Can you just zoom in? Remember, uh, remember to, to uh, ask me to zoom out so you don't see. Anything. So I'm going to do. This is a small brush. Um, yeah, just a solo way, not detail. So it's kind of gray color. So the horse face like this. Just feeling that. There's a little white maybe usually on the on the nose. It's a, it's a jar, a uh, very strong jar, chewing jar, right? That's it. I don't think we need to dot the eye, but it would be nice. Here's the suggestion. Can you see that? All right, done. What? Yeah, the, the, the main thing is the proportion. If you are not good at drawing, use pencil to start with. You know, after this dry, I can add more dark. But uh, he starts always. He starts from medium dark, and the dark uh, added, you know, as essence uh, if needed. You can, you can, he always starts from gray, like a Western artist would do. Okay, um, for this second one, um, with any animal, he he, you know, I learned from my teacher. He he must learn from Master Xu. We always start from the back or the belly, the body part, and then the neck, the head part, right? But you can start from the, the tail, but I think it's, it's a still valid, this rule. We start from the belly, the back first. So there are uh, two curves to define, the hip and the, the back hip and the belly. So we do this curve first. That one is above this line. So we, if we draw a line between the two, I think they're kind of, maybe we're looking at from left to right or something. This one is closer. So it's a little higher, a larger. But uh, because this is behind the, the, um, um, the head, the, the mouth, and the front foot must be higher higher, higher than this one. So maybe you just do that first before you do anything else. <laughs> I want to emphasize, if, if this one goes in the front, the, you will change the perspective. So the, the, the horse, the, this uh, brown horse in front of the, the black one, now it's kind of behind. If you look at the, the ground plane, right? So I'm going to draw quickly now. Um, like I said, I leave a little, I'll consider, Oh, we, you know, we can always use the grid system. So this is uh, about uh, uh, right on the on the golden point, I think, right here. So if we draw this, okay. See, this is uh, the belly, and then the the, the foreshortened um, back, and then this rounded uh, top of the hip. You can you can have some uh, loss in the font, okay? A ver, uh, kind of 
uh, thigh, the side, and then this this leg. Uh, what do this this front first? And this uh, this uh, main. See, this is the front part. I love this. Keep the the backbone of the, the uh, don't you know when you do the hair actually think about the bone it's more important so that solid part you know it, not the loose part okay um, and the proportion of course very important very loose kind of hair there on this side mostly because the the head is turned to the right and the okay now i'm going to add the, the ear i don't I, let me enlarge this so we can see okay now i can see better uh the ear right up there and uh, another ear something like that so there is some uh, hair uh, you know on um, the forehead maybe something like that gravity and uh, this down on this side of the face and uh, there's a straight line on the nose uh, the the eye has a little triangular shape on this side a little curve uh, the face is not uh, let me see how to calculate that. Uh, it's about uh, definitely smaller than the um, belly, right? the, the height of the belly, but it's in the front, so it's a quite large face. Okay, let me just estimate. Big nose there. Straight on this left side, on uh, the right, right side. And then, uh, there's a little bone there, there's an eye. I just start right here. Next to, uh, in between the nose, the white nose and the jar. Jar, it's too dark. I want to show you this nose. Okay. All right, maybe I got too long already. I'm not very good at drawing. You can see I never studied Western drawing class in art school. I didn't take it up, so I, I studied archaeology, archaeology um, drawing class, a very mechanical drawing class. Okay, so this is the side of the back. I, I just paint loosely. It's okay. So this is the leg that has the weight do uh, the hoop yeah it's a little kind of is it okay this kind of dark in there and you can use um, light ink to draw the shading first that's what he, he, he always does and then uh you, you outline I think. you can also use ink uh color uh, I think you, you should have used wrong to start. Easier. Okay, let me just finish the, the other part. And uh, here we have another leg uh, hidden that's behind. What we do is just indicate that a little bit. There's a little. Um, Joint and uh, some kind of muscle. Not sure exactly what it is, but anyway, this is the, the rare, um, that rare leg. Very bony, the shading. Okay, okay. the left their neck John. 
going straight down a little bit into the back, but then back a little bit. He's, he's very good uh, at animal story says he always observed uh, in his hometown, not very far from my hometown, um, he, he taught a horse and the cats when he was young. Besides people, he learned to, yeah, and uh, you can do some sketch, uh, some kind of texture, uh, shading, and then we'll do the color. All right, now the dry brush for the tail. We dry the brush with the piece of uh, paper towel, and then just split the brush like this. Uh, and just draw here. You see, you can use the side chisel, uh, the narrow lines, and use the flat to do the whole uh, surface. So mostly it goes curved up, you know, like that, but sometimes you see there, 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 there are kind of um, swing, maybe uh, function to. Uh, drive out the mosquitoes and some uh, flies, <laughs> so they're constantly moving, even without the wind. You can see the, so some shading, wet into wet, and here we can add uh, the dark to the, the black one, wet into wet, or after it dries. I think it's okay. The the top is bony. So make sure that that's the beginning of the tail. And uh, now the loose horse tail. Dry brush. Something like a hanging orchid <laughs> brush. The orchid leaf will help. Yeah. Just crossing in lines, three crossing lines, something like that. Okay, consider the shading. Uh, this is uh, this side darker, not so very same. Okay, I'm going to do the, the tree because this landscape in the class I have to show you the background. Of course, it's only um, called Dianji. Okay, I'm going to do this trick. <laughs> um, according to a letter he wrote to his student, uh, I think, he would do the subject tree with, the, uh, with this uh, uh, medium dark and then uh, wet into wet with the uh, dark outlines. To create this kind of uh, uh, ancient, ancient effect, ancient tree look. So there are a lot of knots. Uh, don't, don't worry about that. Just, just draw some dry stroke in front, and then um, actually he he doesn't he like moisture. I know everything he does very, um, very fresh. Right? It's a it's a watercolor habit. Okay, you don't want to use dry brush on um, watercolor that much as a Chinese landscape. Okay. So not the the horizontal stroke. Do you remember this is uh, almost just water, so you can modify it if you make a mistake. And uh, if there's a crossing line there, it will be dark, but there's some foliage in between, so just leave a break. There, I think. <clears throat> okay. Um, now we have this kind of zigzag branch. Okay. Uh, 
I start to do the outline. Uh, let me go. Ah, I think I have enough room. I'm sorry to do the whole whole composition here. Right? That's too much work. <laughs> I try to simplify it for you guys, but uh, maybe we make this chart tree much thicker. Merge the two into one. Let's do something about this. So I want to stay simple. Uh, we have a, a maybe some different picture to look at. Sorry, I I I just try to yeah see. This tree can be very large, right? Can be very large. And the figure on the uh, lower right corner, very small. We could do the same thing. We just make the giant, giant, uh, what are called King uh, General Sherman in Redwood? Yeah, something like this, right? Yeah, that, that's something fun to do. Yeah. Uh, let's see if I can still adapt to this. Redwood. Is a redwood some kind of cypress? I don't. I don't know. Okay, let me just do two trees. Um, let me just two. Oh, do you still need the horse? Sorry, I I didn't realize that you might need that. I'll uh, this is your boat. I cannot really do that. Um, it's okay. So I'll, I'll keep doing this. Oh. That's fine, Henry. Okay, good. So yeah, let's, let me know if you need to go back to the horse. Okay, I'm using this uh, this uh, uh, blue hair mustard brush. Oh, that's good. Very good. Okay. So yeah, I like the mustard brush. Even to paint to paint the trees, they they work well. I think. Yeah, yeah, everything it, you can do the whole thing with it, with this brush. Okay, what? Try trying to wet, trying to wet. Dark and get light. Let's take it easy. Oh, uh, they're not uh, like this. This kind of holes. Um, you need to. Create the edge. Kind of. they, they, they live like a five thousand years or something like that, right? And it, yeah, the redwoods actually. They, they, they think it's the Fusang, uh, called it in Shanghai Jin, the Chinese legendary geo, geo, um, what do you say, myth, uh, myth, mythical uh, uh, book in the. Middle age, and they think they discovered the Southern California redwoods then and named them Fusan. Fusan was also, I uh, think it was Japan, but actually, probably they crossed the burning stripe, you know, the, from the, the Alaska come to down to the, to the redwoods. I, I confused which side is shitty, whatever. Just uh, um, 
I think two is enough to I don't have room two for this third one. I just come back to them. This is village. And you can use the uh, um, legacy that's uh, with uh, this kind of can use the uh, yellow blue, I think, with ink. And maybe some yellow too. You, you don't have to use the uh, yellow, you can use the brown instead of yellow. And Yeah, unlike Fubosh, this is a uh, broken stroke. He's struck pretty uh, restrained with some kind of dry brush, but uh, not so wild, not not to the point to split the brush that much, you know, yeah. it's the uh, style. Okay, um, I'm just finished this uh, top part with the more contrast. Uh, the so basically, the negative painting the um, the trunk. I right? just squeeze out the trunk. This is one of the leaves. Okay, let me go back to that uh, uh, horse. I like that horizontal branch. No, that's I just enlarge this. Okay. It has a kind of downward um, movement pointing to it. Direct the attention down to the to the horse, right? just like that. And you can see he used a uh, uh, color to uh, on the on the light part. And the pink on the most, you know, the shitty parts. So that's the Western influence, I think. Okay. But very, very uh, loosely. Oops. Um, almost like football shoe. They live the same uh, time and uh, they work uh, both. At uh, Central University uh, in Nanjing, so Fu Bao Shi and uh, Xu Bei Hong are both my grand teachers. Okay, Fu Bao Shi also. Uh, we'll talk about Fu Bao Shi later. Okay, we just use up to this. Uh, Dark color. Um, it's good to blend some ink. Maybe just lighten it. So it, 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 if you add ink to this fellow, it become uh, almost like indigo. But it's a little intense, more intense, more a little bit more um, watercolors. Okay. Uh, I I like the warm color in that. That it's like a dry. Uh, dry leaves or something like that. So we can, uh, we can do that. But he doesn't use any any um, of this on the trunk, surprisingly. 
because normally we would think, you know, okay, uh, the the tree should have a brown color trunk, right? But he doesn't use any of that. That's a that's to keep it more Chinese, maybe. But I see some some shadow kind of thing. Uh, there, there must be some uh, leaves in the front, unlike the literati painting. They don't worry about that. They, uh, uh, it's like a, you know, Dong Qishang has the tree famous as a, like a you look at a, uh, a slide, you know, like a slide in, right in the middle. It, all the trunk is white. All the leaves is black. That's not uh, the case here. So he, he's more naturalistic. And, uh, so I will put a little bit of warm color around the edge very near, just to have some, you know, red, yellow, brown, uh, red, yellow, and the red, uh, the three primaries, red, yellow, blue. That's the idea. Okay, so. Add a little variation there. there. Oops, don't overdo it <sighs> too much. That's it, that's a mistake. Happy one. You can use the brush in the front to take it out. Okay. Yeah, don't try to, to fill in all the, the black, right? So just keep the rules and uh, let's see. We can we can make some gray with these two colors and uh, just uh, add a little gray to the trunk. There's a root, uh, but like a trying to traditionally we want to indicate the host tree with the uh, details on the root, right? And this one is okay, just to make a suggestion. Make a hole something like that. Too much. All right. I see some. Uh, lots of uh, wrinkles uh, on the tree trunk. There's no no end, you know, no uh, certain rule when you, you just de decide when you think it's uh, finished. Stop before you think it's finished, my advice. So you don't overdo it. Okay. Oh, the ground was grass. Okay, let's see what he does. Yeah, you need to um, divide the ground kind of uh, into uh, a plane uh, with great kind of perspective grade. Let's, let's just draw this with the ground grade. Kind of so it divides into some kind of Uh, great. So some some uh, horizontal line uh, from a, um, wider in the in the front. This is wide, and some uh, getting closer and uh, closer in the distance. So we look at 
perspective. He 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 used he used his steel script calligraphy stroke. So everything is done with like a, like this way. You know. So let me let me change my habit. Calligraphy, calligraphy, calligraphy. Uh, center stroke, center stroke. Very certain, sure mark. Yeah, that's what uh, is. But there's no hesitation when something unsure. Okay. Now I, I uh, split the brush a little bit, maybe. I don't think he did that. He, he just used the tip of the brush to draw um, this grass. Yeah, I think you can you can use color first, and then use a little yellow. We got the yellow, blue, and the brown is considered red. Okay, the water grass, and the the rock is. The ground itself is uh, kind of uh, white, so we don't need to color it. Give it a breeze. Okay. So just use a little grass green. Maybe you can add the brown and um, just mute it. Okay. A little bit. Add a little brown. And a rhythm is very important, right? Again, so you want to have some dance and sparse rhythm. And uh, also pay attention to the shape of the, the white. We, we, uh, Divide first by the line, not by the grounds. And you can you can enhance that this line. Okay, now I use uh, um, before this gets dry. You want to use uh, some uh, uh, dry brush to create uh, the grass. Smaller in the, in the distance, a little more green. I mean, blue. You can use a small brush if you want, just do this straight lines. Um, maybe it will a little bit drier. Uh, you don't have to follow exactly what he does. Maybe uh, you can use a dry brush, you know, just to shade the bottom of the, the uh, grass to indicate some kind of shape. That's where the shadow, yeah, the shadow under the grass creates some kind of. 3D two dimensionality of that. And uh, let's just put some grass to the outside of the frame so don't have to stop at uh, the edge, break the edge. Well, we need to feed the horse with the best grass here, some kind of tender yellow. A little bit there. Okay. Oh, don't forget, you know, something in between the legs. You should indicate some ground there. Okay. So the 
there should be something behind. Overlapping create depths. Yeah. Overlapping. And uh, tied the, the hoof with the brass. The, you don't have to paint the whole detail of the feet. Okay, on a little bit. Disappeared there. And uh, yeah, just use the uh, common sense. I'll just use the um, knowledge you learned from the uh, painting orchids of iris. It, it's a piece of cake, it's a small grass. After you've done this big grass, right? The orchids. And just occasionally make some cross, cr uh, crisscrossing uh, with basically upward uh, lines. You, you make some crossing occasionally to change a little bit, vary a little bit. That's about it. And add some dark near the so this uh, mostly on top of the contours not you know just like a other landscape the classical landscape we learn um, and you not to mention where to put the, the shape right? so you actually uh, help to define the top plan I mean the front plan by doing the back as the grass is growing uh, along the on the top of the contour that helps to define the contour of the, the rock, surface, the ground, the plane, whatever. whatever. Okay, I, I, before I finish, I have five minutes. Um, I would do the wash on the, on the body with this uh, muted, muted, um, Brown color, we can use a little green to, to mute it and uh, just try and wash. I think. Okay. We can add some yellow if needed for the light part and leave some white for variation. I think. And there's uh, some more blue on the shady part, and uh, especially this, this back. This back, this back is the uh, back is under the sh the body, so it's kind of cool, it's, uh, cool there. And, uh, you can use ink to do like the outline, this green state. The uh, the front needs to be well, it's not too dark. I think the face should be dark. Maybe. If so I, I leave the the white, sorry, I did. Can you see it? I leave the white for the uh, white nose. Yeah, that's a characteristic of the horse. I don't need to do the the other half of the face, this is not seen. Okay. And uh, this, only the half, the top part uh, back has the color. And this lower part, just cool color. Uh, this ink, this ink, not, not that ink, just the outline, maybe, maybe. That, that's a, it's a symphony of uh, different layers of elements. You know, it, it create this kind of effect. Okay, that's it. Um, just add a little dot to the tail. It has to be sweet. Indicate thing there. And there, here's the, the thing. Goes left and then the right. Yeah. There's a bone, not not the um, 
Yeah, the IS shape kind of curve nicely. And we can put some, uh, some color there, just blend it. I think this is really strong. Soften it. So just in the, the neck behind the name. Okay. And uh, I don't think we need any color on this one. So you, you can add a little blue, maybe just to indicate the sky color. That's the color. And sometimes you can have a reflective light on the, on the, from the ground. So you can do a little bit more maybe on this shady part. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, how it's going? I think we have one minute to sign it. If you want to leave, you can leave, or we'll uh, send you the finished copy and uh, the recording. Uh, you can uh, always go back to add details, reinstate after uh, it dries. You know, it, it, it takes a lot of time to fine tune this like that. It takes layers, yeah, basically. Transparent uh, watercolor is. <laughs> Let me zoom out so you can take a closer, I mean, can take an overall look of my, my version. Can you see the whole thing? Okay. Oh, it it's a uh, uh, 13 and uh, by, Seventy and a half or eighteen, seventy and a half. Yeah, seventy and a half by seventy and a half. Um, we don't need to do the sky. As he said, he he has inscription on this side horizontal because that way. So we can find that or here. I think maybe still on this side, but uh, vertically just all the way down. Okay. So let's write tribute, uh, homage to Master Shu Bei Hong. Shu Bei Hong. And the same word we wrote on all the master that is before. Uh, we will call him Xu Bei Hong because so that's the name, the full name goes. Uh, he doesn't use any you know, traditional style names. Uh, this is actually his uh, artist name. He has a Original name, nobody knows. He studied uh, calligraphy before he went to France under a master uh, and a reformer politician, uh, Kanye Wei in Shanghai. Uh, Kanye Wei is his uh, calligraphy teacher. And he uh, uh, advocated the the Bei, the city style, or the Jing uh, Shi style. Remember that term? Uh, the uh, stone and bronze style. So basically, he studied uh, seal script. And this, you know, the, the older, uh, like Han or 
six minus this side. Um, Chijing Hikei Hong, and uh, we just write to the year of uh, 2021. You can leave a space between the date and the title. Or, or, yeah. um, we're still in January, so we call this first month of January. And, uh, we can write the date 28. We don't have to, just the uh, Months is not, uh, I'll put my full name, Li times first, Xiao Hui. Okay, and the uh, seal. This is landscape. We use a smaller seal. Would be good. Um, so you can see how small he writes because uh, so that that painting could be full size and full sheet painting. So still, you know, he writes pretty small. And my teacher always writes small. So put uh, last name. Oh, by the way, Ping Hua, you did a very good uh, seal engraving. Uh, I guess first to see what. Beautiful. I wonder how to improve. And uh, I don't understand what to consider a good seal and what is not a good seal. Oh, you just look at the, the others, you know, masters uh, seals. And uh, uh, I think um, a good seal is uh, it's the same as standard as calligraphy, <laughs> more like, you know. More like uh, the uh, calligraphy, yeah. Just like you, you write it, as if you have um, written with a brush. So don't show too much. Uh, uh, I think you did very well, yeah. Very um, rounded and very bone uh, thin kind of. Uh, and it still has a, a uh, just like it, just like. A, Painting, it has composition, dark, uh, dense sparse, that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, just, uh, there's, there's many books and you can read online, maybe you'll see some others. Um, okay, yeah, just a study, okay. just uh, pay attention on, on the seals. Um, there's different styles. Sometimes the ship actually has a, a style with a uh, more direct approach where you Powerful and some you know, high styles, more uh, smooth. Okay, uh, Henry. Henry. Yeah. This is Mike. Uh, could you type the two characters for homage to in the chat? Oh. Uh, okay. Chat. Or do it later. I just was interested in those characters. Uh, if I just write larger here, it will not help. Yeah. That's okay. fine too. Okay, um, yeah, let's, let me write it to first to uh, copy. So, Zhi Jing. Jing means respect, Zhi means to someone, right? To, um, yeah. Great, thanks. I can see it. It's clear. Okay. Well, let me uh, also write on this one. Um, this one, he, Aurelio, he inscribed on this corner because there's a large thing. He has uh, enough space for, for all this, the titles. And, and he put a, a seal on this side. We made. Uh, we may do it, you know, from top down. 
right here, I think. Add a little bit, a little bit of color here, just a bit, but edge a little bit. Okay. So I write the title of this painting to originally. Uh, you know, spring range Yijiang on Li River. Li River Jiang Chun 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 Spring Rain. Li is kind of uh, difficult to write. Okay, um, I'll type uh, your uh, work in, in the chat later. Um, and you can still write the year of the uh, rat. Uh, or, let me see. So until February 12th, you can still use the old rat year. Sweet more means at the end of the year. Okay, you cannot really see. I can either, <laughs> but you will see because I want to use dark over dark. Dark is making more um, depth here. Sweet more. Uh, I will say uh, mimic she did home. So, me, she did home. Now we come out to the dark. You can see. Stay home. And a little bit south. It, and put it. Okay. Do I have a book or something? Look at this with some hard surface here. Just want to support. Um, okay, this small feel my laughing. That's it. Okay, I'll send a, uh, a picture to you later. Um, so that's all for today. I didn't plan for this course, so it was fun. Thank you for all your suggestions. Okay, I, I think this Maybe another stroke. I think I like this split kind of feel of that. So we can add a bit.
the policy is yours. Let me take a look if any of you want to share. Uh, gallery. Okay, so I have Emily. Uh, I'll oh. focus on you. Hold on. Uh, let me hold on, uh, Emily. Let me share. Okay. Emily, thank you. I like the border you draw always. Uh, that gives a nice frame. Um, uh, very nice figure, you got very realistic one. Um, yeah, beautiful. I, I like it's um, uh, double shine. I'm not sure what kind of paper it is. Um, it's see. unsized for sure. Yeah, unsized, the double shine looks like a heavy. Yeah, that's very nice. I, I like the steel yard composition you got. Um, up and down, like uh, the uh, uh, electric uh, cardiograph kind of uh, composition, right? Yeah, I like the re uh, reflections. The 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 only uh, suggestion might be you know on this uh, your your right side, right, your right side, or the left of the painting to be a little more uh, reflection, maybe to. Uh, and you can bring that down a little bit to, to the boat, maybe a uh, very light one. Yeah, very light, uh, just in between that. Does it, um, maybe you don't have to, uh, you, you already have that to, to uh, match the top. So maybe just a little bit in between there to eliminate, uh, yeah, just bring a horizontal right area. Yeah, just a little dry stroke maybe. Yeah, that's a little bit missing, I think. Just look yeah, at the original. Yeah, I agree. Original. Yeah. I didn't that. notice that until I saw it on the screen. Okay, good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Let me see others. Uh, let me take you off the spot. Okay, so uh, I'm going to. I'll do it. Um, who is next? I I'll go with horizontal order. So this the uh, M, M line new. Okay, okay let me view. No. No, no. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let me show you. Oh, you got the fan paper just like I have. Yes. Uh, this one it was uh, colored, right? Oh, beautiful. I like that. Oh, I did you see mine? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I saw yours. <laughs> That's why I copied it. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Yeah. Good, great for a fan painting. Uh, Usually, uh, the horizontal is, is, is flat. Did you paint it uh, flat or a curve? Yeah, you could. Uh, I think they're kind of uh, uh, a little bit curved, but kind of, you know, kind uh, of flat curve. Huh? A little bit, yeah. Ah, yes, uh, that's a nice variation, uh, adaptation. Very good. Thank you. Very classical. You bend it. Uh, Thank you. Can I show you the pose also? Yeah. Okay, I'll go to the others. Uh, you can come back later if you have others to show me. Uh, okay. Let's uh, Daisy. Daisy next. Uh, I don't know if you see the same order, but uh, on my, I go horizontally. I, don't, I hope this will, will cover everybody. Daisy is the uh, lead river. Uh, just a little down a little bit so we can see the top. Let's go just a, a little bit down further. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can see now. A little bit down. Can you see? I, I can't see. Oh, I see. Okay. okay, yeah, a little bit lower, a little bit. Okay, now we see. Uh, you can take a little away from the camera so you can see. Yeah, perfect. Okay, yeah. Now I can see. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I like the a little uh, kind of diagonal from uh, lower left to upper right. Uh, you can balance that with a, a little horizon behind, more horizontal. So it would look uh, more steel yard. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, on the left side, you can have a little horizontal, um, a little additional horizontal element. To everything else is good. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Henry. I, I like the black uh, contrast with the, the background. Yeah. Uh, you get very nice uh, reflection and. Uh, the, the white in the mountain could be a little less if you want to emphasize the shape of the white cloud. But uh, uh, so, yeah, so far so good. Just uh, 
uh, depends on your, if you want to uh, eliminate more white to, to emphasize on the, the cloud, the, the smoke like cloud, if you want, you can, you can put a little light uh, to eliminate, uh, to fill in the, some of the white too, uh, other than the white cloud. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> good job. Very good. Thank you. Okay, the water on inside paper. Okay. So, um, uh, Stephanie, Stephanie from Mexico. Oh, I like the horrors. Um, those are very nice. Yeah. So, like uh, I said, uh, you know, in the beginning, <laughs> when I draw the first drug, the, the horse may, uh, tail maybe should not go up like that in the end. Uh, but sometimes, you know, it, it could, if a sweep something, try to dust off you know, to uh, fan up, to fan up, drive out uh, mosquitoes and flies, you might do that. So, it, it's very uh, good. But uh, just to let you know, you know, if you want to have more steel look, uh, you can have the, the tail more hanging down. Everything else is perfect. I like the um, that the the horse. Yeah, just the proportional. Everything's good. Yeah, the the tree was very nice. Okay, thanks for sharing. Okay, now. Team, do you have something to share? Okay, Team. Uh, Not yeah. really. Uh, Peter will be next. Peter, you'll be the next. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Okay, so it's mine, right? Yeah, your turn. Um, okay. I see the line on the horse is a little bit too solid. Could be more um, lost in found. Other than that, it's very good. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So uh, I like the tree or ink. It's very classical. And uh, uh, the ground uh, could be a little more uh, kind of perspective. Um, yeah. So, so, Which means? Yeah, just to make the lines between, uh, you know, the foreground and the, for, and the far ground a little more. Uh, what kind of uh, uh, perspective line, you know, the grid, perspective of grid, just draw the grid and then vary that. I think it will help. Uh, imagine the horizontal, uh, the horizon, what do you call that? Uh, and then you make this uh, line meet at a, a point, a view a point, a focal point, something like that. So, uh, and, yeah, just draw a little more line in perspective. Maybe, maybe uh, could help with that. Um, and you can have more branch on the second tree on the right. Yeah. Okay, we'll do. Thank okay. you. So, Peter. Okay. Um, uh, let me add. Mostly, I, mostly I was watching you draw today. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. So I, I didn't do the horses, but I, I was very impressed by, uh, the, by, the, by, by the painting you did. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, one thing I learned is, uh, or noticed was a, a lot of little strokes, which is the opposite of my tendency to wanna do long strokes. Oh. So anyway, I think I learned a lot from watching you. This is the first one. Uh-huh. Oh, I like I, that. I, I just couldn't resist. Uh, <laughs> I, tried to, I tried to integrate you into the background. I did lost and found edges. Yeah, I, I love it. I think you did very wonderful work. <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> it looked like me doing. Yeah, the, th the thing is, you know, I used to sometimes incorporate a person in the landscape. Uh -huh. And oftentimes the person looked like they were superimposed. Um, and I, what I've been isolated. working on, what I'm working on is, by by doing lost and found edges, I could make it look so like the person is, isn't superimposed. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, you you did very good with the the um, the, anyway, the it is it is what it is. Couldn't resist. Sorry. 
<laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm very pleased. Thank you for sharing that. It's <laughs> always uh, uh, curious to what you do. And you're very creative. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your remark on my painting. That was a very um, uh, honored. <laughs> honored. Okay. Any other work we have? No. Okay. Can I say something? This is Emmeline. Emmeline. Uh, I've been to the Lee River and also oh. the waterfall very near to Vietnam. Uh -huh. And uh, I highly recommend that when the pandemic is over, I will go to, to go to Guilin because it is the most beautiful scenery and it's a painter's heaven. I mean, you can just stay there on the boat. I we we took you know we were doing this uh, car expedition to the Guangxi area, mm -hmm. but then when we returned, we were staying at the uh, Guilin, and we uh, went there hired a private uh, boat, mm -hmm. and we were doing that Lady River. I tell you, I was like in heaven. Mm -hmm. I've never seen scenery so beautiful. The, the the mood seal uh, should be home put on the painting. It should yeah. be to the heavenly residence. Kimmy, yeah, really, Kimmy. it's, it's yeah, like heavenly. unbelievable. I have to share, okay? It's <laughs> unbelievable. I've been to many you have been in heaven. Before, but this is one of my favorite. Uh -huh. You can put the seal, uh, return from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for, for, for the story. Yeah, we, we all should go in our lifetime to this uh, place. Remember? Yeah, I, I think I almost went to to the waterfall uh, three years ago before a reunion with our, our, our classmates. But uh, because I was an organizer of that event, I couldn't go with others. Um, I was uh, regretting. Uh, I should have some other chance. Maybe we should organize uh, a group. Yes, okay. <laughs> you should do a workshop there. You organize that Lee River. I will okay. join. You'll join. Okay, good to hear. So that's I will come to you. <laughs> yeah, we'll come on that uh, vaccine. <laughs> okay, so okay, if we um, don't have any other comments or let me see if I have any comments. Henry, I, I have a question um, that doesn't have really to do with what we did today, but I tried to post, um, to upload some paintings that we did last week and I couldn't get the site to work. I couldn't, I didn't even have the option to put, to add text. And I tried um, rebooting my iPad. I tried going in and out. I tried to get into it different ways. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it into that, take a look into that. Okay, I didn't know if it was me or if other people were having that problem too, so. Uh, we can do a test uh, right after this class if you stay longer with me, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Stephanie has another painting, beautiful. I think I want to see Stephanie. Oh, beautiful. I see the mist beautifully. Beautiful composition, Stephanie. I like the boat um, larger. It's more uh, Western because we have a, like a foreground uh, in, the, in, the, in the front. I, I almost done this uh, today with the fisherman with a very like a uh, large, um, just like a, a sitting on a, on a, on a boat uh, in front of the picture looking, uh, you know, so the others could be very uh, faded, fogged out. I, I, yeah, I, I like this. Uh, this is very nice. I can feel the uh, atmosphere and the, so it's, yeah, that's a very nice. I, I like the horse, very uh, realistic presentation. Very, very she at home, kind of. Thank you. Give you five stars right now. <laughs> Thank you, Henry. Thanks for everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, let me stop sharing. I'm stop recording. Bye-bye, everyone. See you next time. Oh, next time I haven't decided who, who to talk. Maybe another president, um, Liu Hai Su, or um, um, yeah, I, I'll let you know in email. I tried to send the handouts earlier.
and it'll give you some assignment too. Okay. Oh, I didn't record on, on cloud today. Uh, I only broadcasted on YouTube. I don't know what.